Shaula, also known as Lambda Scorpii, is the second brightest star in the southern constellation of Scorpius, which is visible in much of the northern hemisphere. Like many of the bright stars close to Earth, Shaula is actually more than one star. Astronomers have confirmed it's made up of two stars, and there could be a third one given that the star system is producing more X-rays than expected. The star's name in Arabic means the Stinger, and indeed it forms the end of the hook-shaped Stinger in the Zodiac constellation. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we take a visit to the Scorpius constellation and one of its most intriguing and beautiful sights, Shaula. So let's get to it. It's no secret that Alpha Scorpii, or Antares, tends to steal most of the limelight for itself. That said, Shaula is actually the 23rd brightest star in our skies, so it's perfectly capable of holding its own on this channel. Indeed, it's classified as a bright blue star with a classification of B1.54. The star varies and changes in luminosity. This is due to strange subsurface valves making their way to the surface. Noted in the catalogue of Johann Bayer, and despite its brightness, Shaula was assigned the 11th letter of the Greek alphabet, Lambda, rather than the usual Alpha, which as I mentioned is assigned to Antares, or indeed even Beta, assigned to Akrab for the brighter stars. Some have supposed that this is probably because the star is so far south in the constellation. It is possible to view Shaula as far north as the United Kingdom, but it's best viewed from the southern United States. Indeed, its proper motion through the sky means that over the coming millennia, it will fade even further from the northern hemisphere altogether. Antares may be the more famous scorpion, but this subgiant B-class star is about 35,000 times more luminous than the Sun, and its temperature is estimated at 25,000 Kelvin. Indeed, it's thought Shaula is either right at the point of stopping hydrogen fusion in its core, or it's very close to doing so, which means it's about to go big time. With a mass of around 11 solar masses, it could explode in a supernova, or slightly more likely turn into a heavy white dwarf, possibly one with a neon oxygen core. Shaula is therefore a star on the edge in many ways, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Estimates vary for its distance. The Hipparchus satellite gave 700 light years, whereas more recent observations give only half that at 365 light years. So, up to now, you might wonder why I've decided to dedicate an entire video to this. Interesting, but not necessarily outstanding star. We have other large stars in our vicinity, of course, Acrox, Rigel, and indeed Antares itself. So why Vega? Why have you chose to tell us about this particular star? Well, firstly, astronomers believe that Shaula is made up of two stars. The principal, Shaula AA, is a B-class star, with Shaula B orbiting around six astronomical units away. Shaula B is also a large blue star, believed to be about 5,000 times more luminous than the Sun, with a temperature of around 21,000 Kelvin. So a very, very powerful star in its own right, and it would no doubt dwarf any of our local neighbours. So again, that's great, but why is Shaula such an interesting place? As we've mentioned before on this channel, there are many blue-white B-class binary star pairings with powerful stars. Well, the point is that astronomers are still trying to figure out if there's a third star in the system. If it does exist, Shaula AB, as the theoretical star is called, is just under two times the size of our Sun. It is expected to orbit Shaula at an average distance of just 0.15 astronomical units, which would be well inside Mercury's orbit if the star were transported to our own solar system. The crux of the matter is that Shaula AB might well be a neutron star created in a supernova blast from a much more massive progenitor star. This is indeed very interesting, and there may be a possibility that one day, Shaula may turn into what's known as the thorn Zyko object. These objects are formed when a neutron star collides with a larger star, typically a supergiant, which swallows it entirely. As the neutron star slowly makes its way through the giant's interior, it spins ever closer to the star's core. Once it collides and merges with the core, perhaps after hundreds of years, the star's life typically ends with a back hole. Although in Shaula's case, a neutron star would likely be formed, born from the mass of both stars that preceded it. A second possibility, instead of a neutron star, could be a very massive white dwarf that is the result of a mass transfer, or which seems most likely, a star which is still in the act of forming, or what's known as a T Tauri star. Named for the first of their type observed, T Tauri stars are variable stars which show both periodic and random fluctuations in brightness. They are newly formed and less than 10 million years old, and low to intermediate mass stars, up to about three solar masses. Their central temperatures are still too low for nuclear fusion to have started, 
You might think of them a bit like a car that's been manufactured, but the engine has yet to be tested. Of course, if Shaolet A does explode as a supernova, as many astronomers expect, then it could likely destroy this much smaller star, if it is indeed a T Tauri star when it does so. So, let's go through this again. Shaola, a massive B-class star, is a star right at the point of death. It's surrounded by an unknown entity that could well be a neutron star. When Lambda Scorpii decides to finally change form into a white dwarf, or again, possibly a neutron star, it's going to leave one huge celestial mess in its wake, isn't it? Chaotic system though doesn't end there. It's thought there may be a 15th magnitude companion to the system. With a separation of 42 arc seconds, it's not known whether it or not it is physically associated with Lambda Scorpii, and if it were, the orbital distance would approach approximately 7,500 astronomical units. Finally, in today's graphic we imagine what we might see if the Shaula system were to replace the Sun, as viewed from the incredible Juniculum Dorsa ridge on Saturn's moon of Dione. First we see the Sun as viewed from Saturn, shining at minus 21.7 apparent magnitude, and many hundreds of times dimmer than it would be from Earth, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Now, we watch as we see the Shaola AA star develop, until it reaches its current brightness. It would shine at plus 33.27 apparent magnitudes from the distance of Saturn. Its brightness indeed would be so phenomenal that it would shine as bright as the Sun would at just 8 million kilometres, or 0.05 astronomical units. So, it's plain to see, like many other blue-white stars of its kind, Shaola would totally and utterly dominate our solar system. Dione would evaporate, while the beautiful orange planet of Saturn would boil. Shaola, also known as Lambda Scorpii, is 36,300 times brighter than our Sun. It hides a hidden secret that almost inside its perimeter could be a white dwarf, a protostar, or even a neutron star. The double star system has captivated the interests of astronomers for centuries, and it's moving south as it speeds through our Milky Way galaxy. Tired with playing second and third fiddle in the Scorpius constellation, Shaola is about to go bang, and in its wake it will leave a celestial mess that even the biggest parties on Earth would struggle to imitate. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee in our link list in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you'd like any videos or subjects brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and perhaps next week, or perhaps next month, your idea could just show up. Take really good care of yourselves, and look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.